Bye, Eschkalau. Bye, Eschkalau. That is it. We have left Eschkalau and Tiago behind, and now we have a two and a half hour trek to Bagadalva to start tomorrow morning from the border of Spain and Portugal to walk 250 kilometers. Woo! Woohoo! We're going to see how much of that we can do. We're aiming for the whole lot. Super excited. Lots of scenery, fresh water wherever you go, abandoned buildings to explore. I think this is the best leg of our journey yet. Thanks for sticking with us uh, and we can't wait to show you what we're doing. And we're in Bacaldalva. <laughs> Thanks to this lovely old gentleman in the van. <laughs> we thought not to film for his own purposes. <laughs> yeah, just walking along the side of the road, we've just given you guys an update. About a quarter of a kilometre down the road, he pulled up next to us and uh, said, he asked us where we were going and he doesn't speak a word of English, but he talked about how he owns lots of uh, olive groves and uh, almond groves here and he's got a little house in Bagadalva. And There's a yeah, wine. Drove, drove us all the way here and saved us a two and a half hour walk. So now we've got plenty of time to explore and find a place to set up for the night. <laughs> Beautiful people, man. Beautiful people. Hey team. Hello. Mm -hmm. Try to adjust you a little bit there. Yeah. Okay, that's better. So we have had our first night on the Dulu River train track walk. 250 kilometers. You guys definitely know that by this point. But we stayed in Barcadava train station last night. I don't have too much information about it right now to be honest, but I will find some out and let you guys know but it hasn't been abandoned for that long and Tiago is saying that in the next 10 to 15 years they're going to open it back up because the Dula River has so many big boats that go down it and it's becoming almost uh, an enterprise itself. So we tucked ourselves in there last night, don't know if you guys can see. <laughs> uh, out of the rain, which has been non-stop all day and we've had some breakfast and mulled around and got some beautiful views of the birds and the mist and the hills <laughs> all of it sounds like something off of the sound of music <laughs> <laughs> I've collected some tinder bundles uh, from some dry grass that I found in one of the buildings so we can take that with us if the weather stays this damp uh, we're gonna pack down our things and we think we're gonna stay here another night because Otherwise, we're going to have two days of rain instead of just one day of rain tomorrow. Um, so yeah, go and collect some water and get some cooking on the go. I'm going to film another cooking video for you guys this evening. Not sure what we're going to have yet, but you'll see. And we're just going to take you around and show you some of the station and where we are and then catch up with you a little bit later on. Peace. Adios. So as you guys saw, I was making 
fire reflector out of stones so it could face towards the tent so we can have some warmth tonight. And I decided to pick some coals up from an old fire that was uh, just, a, well, literally about five feet away from the tent. And I found hundreds of these. Which is the bottom of shotgun shell casings. And I mean hundreds. There are loads of them. Whoa! He like lifted his back legs up and showed him showed me his red butt. We got a red bum? Yeah, come around this side, have a look at him. And I poked him. Where is he? There. Oh my god. So he makes himself look like he's a big creature facing that way. Whereas in actual fact he's not, he's just lifting his back legs apart and showing him the red underneath. I wonder what he is. Leave in the comments below if anyone knows what this is. I'm really intrigued to know what that is. Right, wow, that's bright. <laughs> Lunchtime done. Madam's now tucking into some Nutella. Okay, let's see if Tiago. Obrigado, Tiago. Um, the sun's come out. The sun's come out. Woo! It's beautiful. So firewood collected for the evening. My favorite rod and my striker ready. Everything we should need for this evening. There's also some treated fence panels around here that were just cut up into little bits on the floor and I'm gonna use them if I absolutely have to. I'm gonna light it for about half past five, quarter to six, I think, so we can get ourselves nice and warm. Cannot wait for fire in the wilderness. It's been too long. First time ever doing this. Yes. Campfire popcorn. No idea if it's gonna work. It might just burn, but who knows? Yeah, that was the popcorn. <laughs> yeah, we promise. That's not the fire crackling. Wow. <laughs> You don't want it to sit on the coals and burn, but you don't want to raise it too high that it doesn't pop, basically. So you want to move it around the fire. It just needs a bit of love and attention. Mm. Everything is getting too hot, you move it away. You let yes. residual heat in the pan pop the rest of the kernels without actually burning. They say that when there's like only one to three pops a minute, that's when you're popping. Popcorn. Tip number one, don't leave on the fire. Yes. Tip number two, 
don't put water with it to try and simmer it or steam it more than yeah. tip number three <laughs> don't put your hand near the flame <laughs> best way to make popcorn is just to keep an eye on it, I think. It's too hot. I can't do that. <laughs> oh. Popcorn. Mm. Good. Tastes like I'm in the cinema. Madam is in full sleep mode and it's 4.38 in the afternoon. <laughs>